All right, we've got Paul Harding here with us. Paul, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Ah, oh, I'm good. You got to feel good. You got book number three. Let me find it. There it is. Yep, there coming it out is. soon. This other reading, Whew, doozy, doozy of a book. So, um, you you're so you, you have an like I said, you have an unusual biography. You you you're playing in this band and you're doing well. You're touring. I mean, it's like you guys are doing it. You know, it's it's not every band can do that, but you have a kind of epiphany that um, you you read uh, what was it you read that sort of that lit lit up fiction for you. No, oh, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of things. You know, the the one that that years earlier that I really remembered reading and just you know having that mind blowing like you can do that. Uh, was um big great big novel by Carlos Fuentes, Mexican novel. It's yeah. called Terra Nostra. Uh -huh. You know, and it's like people going through time and space and history and you know, and I just thought that was just it just blew my mind. And then and as I was kind of a reader, even though yeah, as a, I I hesitate to say musician as a drummer, you know. Hey 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> I could tell you all the dumb drummer jokes. Someday. I'm sure you can. <laughs> but um, but um, uh, the thing, we, the the band that sort of was pretty much broken up or was getting close to it. Right. And um, so on kind of a, not a whim, but I was kind of like, I think like a lot of writers, you think you're a writer for years before you actually try to write. You know, you could walk around like, I'm kind of the writer in the family. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Not yet. But I so I tried to write a couple of stories and went to the um, New York State Summer Writers Institute, which right. is up at Skidmore College. Um, and um, just by the luck of lottery, Marilyn Robinson walked in. Wow. And within, you know, I always said, but within 10 minutes of her starting to talk about literature and art. And, uh, you know, I was just like, that's the life of the mind I want for myself. Uh, that's it. It was just Wow. So for our listeners and viewers who don't know, Tinkers was your first novel and it won the freaking Pulitzer Prize. I mean, so I I, I have to I, I I'm always curious about that experience when you I said this asked the same thing of um, wrote the life of Pi. Um, oh yeah, and Martel. Yeah, and yeah, and Martel, which is like, OK, you know, it's the, it's the experience a lot of people sit around dreaming about. Uh and it must have kind of blown your mind. Like, how could you make sense of it? Because it was a small press that picked it up, right? Yeah, yeah. Bellevue Literary Press. Right. One, you know, they, at, at the time, they, you know, they, a boutique not for profit press that, you know, existed. <laughs> right? at the well, you're a debut novelist, literary novelist. It's not a high concept book. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's the, you know, it's the New York's, it's the NYU School of Medicine. That's, that's, but is Bellevue, that what it is? Yeah, Bellevue oh Hospital. Oh my god! Like, literally, now they they've kind of they've decoupled from, Be okay. but they were like you know a double wide janitor's closet at, <laughs> at Bellevue, <laughs> and I, you know the editor and I used to have you know these conversations on Friday afternoons about like okay, you put twenty copies in the back of your car and go and do a reading or whatever, and then uh, you know and then we'll see where we are if the press is still in existence on Monday. It was like that close to it, wow. but it was wonderful. It was really, really great. Um, yeah. And then the, you know, the prize is just one of those things that, oh, I don't know. It's just, it's, it, it only becomes more improbable kind of as time goes on. It's just, it's, it's like winning the lottery. It was just so surreal. Um, and yeah. they don't tell you, they don't tell you. I, I found out by looking online. You did? did nobody <laughs> called you up and said, Paul, you, why not? Come on, no, you I was, slackers. Jesus, I was, I was call the man. I was teaching at Iowa. I knew they were going to announce the prize that day. You knew um, you were shortlisted or whatever. You no, knew. no, absolutely nothing. Come on. Nothing. Your publisher so didn't know? I, I What? Your I knew publisher? nothing. Like, literally just. At, oh, just, my God. And so I was, I said, you know, oh, they're going to announce it today. So I'll find out who it is. And then we'll talk about it in my seminar, <laughs> you know, because. You know, <laughs> Prizes are a very kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. sport. you know, half the world thinks it's the end of, you know, it's, it's the end of art, that right. jerk one, you know, and the other people. Right, like, right. So I figured, you know, it'd be kind of fun, you know, topic of conversation. And I just remember, I just went on and it, was, it still had 
I think it was Elizabeth Strout the year before, is all of Kittredge. Yeah. And I just, you know, hit Elizabeth Strout. So I started refreshing. <laughs> I just said Elizabeth Strout, Elizabeth Strout, Elizabeth Strout, Paul Harding, Paul Harding. <laughs> and, that must have been. God, that I must kind have of been. Almost, I, I sort of fainted. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just it was like the cartoon eyes. And I just sort of slid off the couch in my cruddy little apartment. And then 90 seconds later, I was with the uh, Associated Press. And it just went kaboom. It was just, I knew it was big, but it was big, bigger. I mean, it, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. But you've used it well. You, got, you gave yourself an opportunity. You wrote Anon. And then, Enon or not? I'm, Enon, yeah. Enon, okay. <laughs> So, but then let's talk about. So then you have ten years in between that and 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 this other Eden. Very ambitious yeah. book. Very very ambitious book on a lot of levels. Um, but I, that's probably I assume that you like the ambition of it, the enjoy the challenge of it. Yeah. yeah. But that ten years is a long time not to be. I know you're working and I know you're yeah. teaching. Yeah. But not to have finished to have the experience of finishing something. Yeah, it was and very so, strange. Was it hard for you? Was it just, did you just settle into it? Like, what was, what, how did, how did you deal with that? It was, um, well, I don't know. It was that, that sort of, you know, like, like, like we were talking about before we went on, you're, you're the kind of, um, you know, the tagline, you know, the idea that you're, you're always writing. You, there's no, there's no difference between myself as a writer and myself as a private citizen. That's, you know, that's, that's absolutely true. And, and and I think as you, I mean, in my experience anyways, I just kind of knew that the book that I was working on was going to take a long time. Like I, you know, it took just a long time to get what's the vision here and to clar right. clarify and watch it just come into focus over the years. And it's very layered and there's all sorts of stuff in it, but, you know, but it's engaging at every moment, you know, and that's one of the things after you've kind of done a couple or three books, you, you personally you're impatient you're like i just wish this thing was yeah, done. yeah yeah right but kind of professionally or whatever there's that discipline of like no just you know like melville called writing moby dick ditcher's work you just <laughs> like get up every day and get the shovel right and you just you and it is it is that kind of like you know you have faith in the process man you, you know, know i i always think with books that or any story is that the idea the the impulse i think arrives to sir in service to my life to my curiosity to my but then this is the switch once it does i'm in service to it Absolutely. You start one way and then you gotta be you gotta say now i'm following you it's and I gotta trust you it's utterly selfless at that point yeah and 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 that's the one of the that's that's that jolt of electricity that i love so much is when you look at something you go oh, i didn't do that i i didn't i yeah, couldn't have done right. that you like, did I'm not you I'm were not and you you just go you're like you know you kneel down and say thank you Art yeah, that's right. capital A yeah it's just so cool there's just something that no, nothing nothing besides art can kind of do well, that I love someone asked um, Keith Richards oh you wrote the greatest guitar solo ever he's talking about the the satisfaction riff and he just said well I was glad I was there when it came along yeah which I thought yep. he gets it and you, yeah. there is that sense of like you gotta just I always think writing is my job is to be in the frame of mind where art can occur. Absolutely. Right. right? I, and I got to get there. And then you, then the, what we call craft is like working with what happens when I get there. That, yeah. Does that That's, make sense? So, absolutely. I feel like I'm an amanuensis. I'm just there to take dictation. My job yeah. is to shut up and listen. But really and shut up. Work. Like it's, yeah. it's not that easy to shut up. Like you got right, to right. do it. Because Shutting up means going into each day's right into every sentence without presumption. Yes. You don't already yes. know. You don't know. If you, if you did, it's not worth typing up. That's right. It's great. I love to have them, but I'm not quite done with you, my friend. I'm not quite done. I got one more question for you. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about all the writing you've done since you started writing and finish the sentence. If writing has taught you anything, it's taught you what? Um never to presume anything yeah god our egos don't like that do they no <laughs> the ego wants to know doesn't it <laughs> well then you go i'm so smart for knowing that yeah, right. no, no, yeah. No. it's it's it has to do with you know you know you're working with characters and you want and that goes back to recognition you know in order to have somebody read to, you know i remember we did tinkers and you know the editor and i were like this is a new england book we'll be lucky if we sell 2500 right. covers right. whatever 
And then I went, you know, after the prize, I went around the world and there were people, I remember one guy saying to me, it's in Cape Town. He's like, did you, did you live in one of the townships? Because the mother in Tinkers is just like wow. my, my mother, you know, because she's tough and she doesn't take any. And that, so there's that idea of like, you know, and, and that you're, so not only that people you could never imagine recognizing themselves in your books may, you know, and that's what I mean. So you don't make any presumptions. No. You just, you know, to, um, and also just the fact too, that you think about what the books that are most important to you in your life mean to you and how important they are. And, th and this is where it's, it's not, you know, you, you aspire to it. You don't assume it, but your books could mean that to other people. They will. They already have. Yeah. They and, already and when have. They, when they do, you don't want to be a fool. You know, you, you know, you, it's very humbling, you know? And so that's it. You're like no presumptions because lack of presumption, you know, aspiring to be as, you know, as, as without presumption as possible to me is just like a way of just being respectful of other humans, you know, being, you know, respectful of other people's experiences of their own humanity, you know, not trying to coerce them into your version of things. Mm -hmm.